Hi everybody, Dr. Gustin here, and we're going to talk about the syllabus. So if you clicked on this link, you will see the syllabus and you can print it out. And I highly recommend doing that because you can then put it in your three ring binder. I'm recommending that you have a hard copy of this just because it's really handy to have and you might need just to look at it quickly and you can take notes on it. Um, as I'm starting to go through this, I also want to remind you that on the lab quiz this week, there are a couple questions about the syllabus. So um, please pay attention and all this stuff is pretty important. Um, as you can see, um, there I am, Dr. Brenda Gustin. There's my email, my office, and the most reliable way to contact me is by email. I do have office hours. I have live office hours, and I have virtual office hours that I will be in my office at that time. Um, I'm actually on campus a lot, but a lot of times I'm in lab or in a meeting or you know in another class or something. So um, you definitely can get a hold of me during um, with email, and I try to get back pretty quickly. I mean, I like to say within 24 hours, but usually it's much sooner than that. Um, sometimes on the weekends, if the question isn't urgent, I might wait a little bit longer just to try to protect my mental health so I don't have to be worrying about work every single minute. But if it's something urgent, I generally will respond as quickly as I can. That being said, remember that our quizzes and tests are all due at 11.59 p.m. on Sundays. And so that's kind of, you know, a minute before midnight on Sunday. I am not going to answer an email around then. I'm asleep. So um, last minute on Sunday, not likely I will be responding very quickly. So it has my office hours there, the course description, um, the textbook information. I talked a little bit about that in the welcome. Remember that you have this um, this thing is called inclusive access or first day access to the book and um, you should be able to get into the McGraw-Hill both the ebook and the other resources just by using our Brightspace web page so um, if you have any issues with that let me know um, talking to talking about our course access in, in Brightspace right there um, weekly format of of the class um, there's there's a calendar that I showed you in the welcome tab on the first page of the you know the where the visual table of contents is so it's always going to post assignments there most often assignments are due at 11 59 p.m. on Sundays at the end of each week one major exception is the final exam which is due at noon on Thursday of week 15. It's on your syllabus. I will remind you multiple times but it is just one of those things that it always seems like there's somebody that after Thursday says wait a minute I didn't take the final exam. I thought it was on sun due on Sunday. It is not. It is due on Thursday of week 15 and I will remind you of that. Each week there'll be a lecture study guide and you'll see that with week one. The lecture study guides I recommend, they're posted in Brightspace, I recommend that you print them out and um, put that in a three ring binder. Those lecture study guides have um, are what you're expected to know for that for that unit, for that week as far as lecture. And I have mine sitting here in a three ring binder. And what you're going to see is there's a lot of um, things that you should know. Science is a process. And then it says describe the general process of the scientific method. You're going to use the ebook, and I'll show you that in a minute. I'll talk about that a little later. And you're going to be able to answer those. The thing that you might want to do uh, is if you want to write, write on these study guides when you go look up that information is to put spaces between there. So you can, you're going to download these. You can um, reformat it any way that you want. You can fill in the information there. The other way to use the lecture study guide is to just keep it like this and then have a separate piece of paper where you take your notes. The other thing you're going to see on the lecture study guides are lists of vocabulary. So if you um, want to, you can create spaces there and fill in the vocabulary. If you don't want to do it that way, take another sheet of paper and and um, and write your vocabulary words there. But this is what you're going to use to study for your exams. So if I were to study for this exam, the first thing says describe the general process of the scientific method. I would try to do that out loud. If I can't do it, I'll go look at my notes. And it should have the answers there. 
Okay. Um, I'd go down that vocabulary list and I'd say each definition out loud. So this is going to be a really important part of your learning for this course. So print out those lecture study guides. Next thing you're going to see is in the um, on Brightspace, it's actually going to say lecture assignment. So there'll be a section for your lecture study guide. And then there's a thing that says lecture assignment. So you print out the lecture study guide. Then you go to the section that says lecture assignment, which will be the next section. And what that is, it's going to link you right to the, to the ebook. Now the ebook is actually something we call a smart book. And so what I was able to do is, I mean, I can't give you everything in that chapter. It's just too much. It would be way too much for to cover a single course. So what I do is I identify which parts of the book I, I want you to read. And you can tell what parts those are by this lecture guide. But you can also see in that smart book link, in that lecture assignment link, that it will go right to the textbook and it will just include those sections. Um, it'll, it'll actually, I'm sorry, it'll include all the sections, but it will highlight the sections that are covered on the lecture guide. Now it doesn't highlight every single thing that's, that you need to do, but you, you'll be able to tell between the lecture guide and the smart book of what things you need to read and what you need to fill in. The, what you're also going to see um, is that in that lecture assignment link, there's going to be questions related to the, to the reading. And I think I'll talk about that in a video that I'll put in the week one link. On Blackboard, you're also going to see a lab handout. I recommend you print out that lab handout. And um, it's also going to refer to, there'll be some links there. Usually there'll be some links there for virtual labs. So print out that lab handout put it in your notebook and do that lab and then you'll have a lab quiz and so I'll show you that in the week one section. We're going to be proctoring the lecture exams and the final exams which means you need a computer that has a, um, a camera and audio. The program I've been using is called Honor Lock. Now as of the writing of this, as of the making of this video, um, the college is having some issue with the honor lock contract related to our change in Brightspace. But I'm assuming we're going to be using honor lock. If not, we'll be using something similar. And when we get closer to that time, I'll give you some instructions about that. If you don't have a computer with a camera, um, you can buy for 30 bucks one of those cameras that you can just set on your computer. Otherwise, you can go to the college and there's all sorts of computers in the um, that you can use and take an honor lock test. Um, Actually, let me just tell you one more thing, and it says it in here. Occasionally, I get students that hate taking the tests on the computer, and they're nervous about it, or they're, it's just not comfortable. I'm happy to have you come in to, on campus the week we have tests, and um, I'll proctor it. You know, you and I can talk, and we can figure out a time that works for both of us, and you can bring your laptop, and you can take it while I'm there without the computer proctoring. So talk to me about that if, if that's something you're interested in. Um, that being said, I'm not going to come in on the weekend to do it. I'm only going to be here during the week. So you have to have it done by Friday. Okay. Missed exams, quizzes, and late assignments. I'm just having a lot of people missing things. And then I'll get some people just handing everything in chronically late. Honestly, the people that hand in things late, a lot of those folks just don't make it through the class. So it's it's kind of a hassle for everyone involved. And I know being chronically late can really be a signal that things aren't going well at all. So um, what I did, what I'm going to do this semester is late assignments will be accepted for up to one week after the due date with a 50% reduction in your grade for a late assignment. And so that assignment will be entered into your grades and I'll go in and I'll, I'll make it reduced by 50%. If it's more than a week overdue, I'm not going to, you can still do the assignment, but I'm not going to, to take a grade for it. If you're having a real problem that it's more than just, you know, um, a little thing, let me know and um, I will try to work with you. Uh, I have on here, if you wait until the last minute to take a quiz and your internet connection failed, you don't get extended time. Uh, I get a lot of people. In fact, these programs tell us 
what time you're taking quizzes and all. And I know a lot of people take them at 10 o'clock on, on um, Sundays. If something happens at that point and the internet is down or you've got a glitch or something, it it just nothing I can do. It's going to be late. So try to take things sooner in the week rather than later. So you want a um, three ring binder. You want to put your syllabus, your lecture guides, and your lab handouts in there. We have tutoring services on campus. You can go to the Learning Commons and there are science tutors. Frankly, I'm a great tutor. I'll help you. Um, if you want to make a virtual meeting with me or stop in on office hours or make an office hour outside of my office hours, let me know. I'm glad to help you. So um, I've had people that meet with me once a week and we talk about the material for the week. So I'm glad to do that. Um, really want you guys to do well in this class. You can see the course grades right here. I leave you a space right here to write down the points you earned. These will also be showing up on Blackboard, in, I'm not sorry, in Brightspace on your grade sheet. And so there'll be a running tally of what your grade is for the whole semester. But you can see we're going to have four exams. They're worth 75 points each and a final exam. We have all those lecture assignments and then the weekly labs. And so that'll total to 710 points. And here's the, the grading scale. This is probably the part that um, is most critical. For some reason, when I post this on Blackboard, it's been, or Brightspace, it puts a space here. So before you print it out, you might want to change that space so all of this fits on the same page. So delete that space. And look at this. It tells you what we're going to be doing. First week, we're doing scientific method, and we have lab. Second week, we're doing chemistry. Third week, etc. Fourth week, we have exam number one. Okay, We still have lecture material. It tells you when the break weeks are. And it reminds you that the final exam is Thursday. It's due Thursday, December 15th at 12 noon. So you have to have it done before that time. OK, so that's the syllabus. Like I said, there's going to be um, like four. I think I think I have six questions from the syllabus on your week number one lab quiz. So make sure you're familiar with this. And um, let me know if you have any questions. You guys take care.